Hey guys, we're back with another episode of our franchise mode with the San Jose Sharks. I guess we're only 37 games in. I, I thought by the, I think this is the fourth. I thought by the fourth one we'd be a little bit further than we are. Anyway, I'm going to sim my month. I actually have a few things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about uh, a few of the goalies that have new homes or found new homes over the off season. I'm going to start with uh, talking about Mike Smith and how I think he'll do in Calgary. I think that Mike Smith will have a good year in Calgary. I think he'll... He might not have a better save percentage than last year, or maybe just a little bit better. His save percentage last year was .914. His goals against average will be better, I think. It's 2.92 last year, and that that's really not that good that's close to three but his save percentage is all right i think he'll do better better in calgary uh for reason well better defensively uh calgary's better defense especially with the addition of travis hamannick or hominick i think it's hamannick um i I don't, I don't know if his, yeah, like I said before, I don't know if his save percentage will be much better, like maybe .915, maybe .92, which is a good save percentage, in my opinion, anyway. I, but yeah, he's one of the goalies I think will have a lot of, a way better season than he did last year with Arizona. Like, I think Calgary will make the playoffs again with Mike Smith. I think he'll do better than uh, at least during the start of the season than Brian Elliott did. I think he'll he'll have a real good season with uh, with Calgary. So that's Mike Smith. Uh, I always think I always thought Mike Smith was a good goalie, even when Arizona wasn't that good. It looks like we are going to probably have to do a rebuild. It might be rebuild time here in San Jose. We got 49 points, so yeah, that's no good. Uh, the second one I'll talk about is uh, Jonathan Bernier, former uh, former Leaf. He's with uh, Colorado now. I think, I think he'll be like split in time with Varlamov, especially if Varlamov plays like he did this season. I I don't know if Bernier will do that great in Colorado because their defense is a mess. He had a good year, first year in Toronto, like a decent year. But then he was nowhere. Like the next year he even got sent to the AHL. I, I think he'll do okay, but I don't think he'll do great. He might, he may push Varlamov for the starting position, but I don't, me personally, don't. I don't think he will. I think he'll be a backup there, but I, I do think, though, they'll give him a shot and split him, split time with uh, Varley, but I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll be a starter there. That's enough of Jonathan Bernier. I'll talk more about uh, some of the better goalies that that went. I'll talk about uh, Brian Elliott going to Philly. Uh, Brian Elliott, to me, is an inconsistent goaltender, whether he's a starter or a backup. He's not consistent. I think it'll be the same in Philly. I, I don't know who who's the starter if it's Neuverth or if it's going to be Brian Elliott. He did, like, he had a bad start to the season, but I think he picked it up near the end. His goals against the average was 2.55 last year, and his save percentage was .910. I think that, like, he had to have picked it up near the end of the season because I know uh, Chad Johnson was getting more starts than him because uh, he was rough at the start so for him I think 
in my opinion, they must be split in time too because Brian, neither one of those uh, goalies are starters. I don't, in my opinion, they're not starters either. Either is uh, Jonathan Bernier. I know that Calgary made the playoffs with Brian Elliott and Chad Johnson, so two backups uh, to me, but uh, Chad Johnson, both Chad Johnson and Brian Elliott actually had the same save percentage last year, uh, .910, but the goals against the average was 2.55 and 2.59, so not a huge difference, but yeah, I don't think Brian Elliott will do any better in Philly, I actually think he might do worse. Uh, well, I'll talk about Eddie Lack, I guess. Uh, the other goalie uh, in Calgary, they traded for him, I believe. Not traded like just for him, but he was part of a trade. Uh, he had a 2.64 save, or goals against average and a save percentage of .902. I think Eddie Lack is better than that. He's not, by any means, he's not a uh, best goalie. Or I do think his, he could be a starter. Not a great starter, but he could be a starter if he lived up to his potential and what he can actually do. He, he had a pretty bad year last year from what I heard. I've seen, I've seen some of the... Some of the posts now, I'm, or I saw some things on Facebook about the coach talk and crap and whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to waste too much time on Eddie Lack. Eddie Lack, yeah, I don't think I think he'll do better, but in Calgary, which I said about Mike Smith too, but Mike, I think Mike Smith's actually a really good goalie. He just didn't have the defense in Arizona. I'm not going to talk about too many more of the goalies because I want to talk about more of them in the uh, in the next video. I don't want to do them all right now, but talk about uh, Steve Mason going to Winnipeg. Um, I'm pretty sure that's another split time. Uh, I really don't know what Winnipeg was th thinking. I don't think he'll help uh, any of their young players, uh, young goalies out. I don't think he'll do much for Winnipeg. He is a decent goalie, but kind of like Brian Elliott, he's inconsistent. So sometimes he's good, some games, sometimes he's not. You just never know when you put him in there. Last year, he had a goals against average of 2.66, which isn't very good it's not bad bad but it's not very good I'd say 2.75 is the highest I'd want my save percentage to be if I was a goalie and so that's pretty close to the highest I would want to be to even be decent and his save percentage was 0 0.908 it's not horrible but it's not great for your starter it's alright but it's not great and I'm having a hard time deciding on what we want what we want to do here because uh, we're only one point ahead of Calgary for a playoff spot and like I could risk it but then we're gonna Joe Thornton's gonna retire for sure and uh, we could get some some things back if we're not going to be a playoff team for trading the older guys and right now it's hard to just to tell and we're right at the trade deadline so I can't ask for your help but I think I'm gonna go ahead and say we're gonna trade our older guys for either young younger guys that are ready NHL ready uh picks or uh, or other guys that aren't quite as old I don't know if like 
it still says we want to trade I would say Thornton and Marlowe and Ward and Paul Martin are the four guys we'd want to trade all above 35 and I would say the rest we'd keep still even though they are older, they probably don't want to go through the whole rebuild, but I don't think we need them. So we're going to try that. Joe Thornton, does any team want him? Boston, yeah, Boston wants him, but Boston can't afford him. Buffalo wants, I don't, oh, they do. They must be in a playoff spot. Let's see what Buffalo has for potential guys. Obviously, we're not getting that. A goo, goo, I don't know how to say that. Gooley, if that's right. Go, guile. A couple top nines. A 78 overall top nine. William. Oh, yeah. William. Cartier. Oh, this guy's NHL ready, though. Uh, he's only a top nine forward. Gergensen's, but... But he's NHL ready, and I think we might be able to get him just for Joe Thornton. Maybe. We might actually have to add a little bit. I can't tell. It looks like we're actually giving up more. So maybe I'm wrong. Why does it do that? I'll try to squeeze a pick out of him. Maybe a third. Washington's third. Let's see if we can do that. Trade accepted. I don't need to go to roster moves. So shut up, Joel. You're going to. So are you. Well, everybody's getting upset. Oh, so are you. Oh, that's probably why they're getting upset. Because they know that they're going next. So Couture and Pavelski. Uh, this is not how it's going. Because Carlson won't be. Oh, yeah. Now uh, Hurdle moves up. So that means Tierney can move into the center spot there. Carlson won't be playing there though. I don't like Gergensen. He was an 84. Now all of a sudden. Ah, oh, fuck. Gergensen's a center too, but. 75. 75. Yeah, I'll put two way forward. Yeah, two way forwards. I'll put Gergensen on the third line. Carlson on the second line. Well, it doesn't. I don't need to do this right now because I'm making more trades anyway. <clears throat> I'm done talking about Steve Mason now too. I'm making some trades, so we're gonna more concentrate on what we're doing with that. So we'll see if any teams want. See, I thought Gergensen was gonna be our. Second or yeah, I guess third line center is what he is, but I thought he was gonna be a good one 84 overall, but Then he went down. Oh, yeah, we want oldest. So Marlowe They want him too So is Boston. Boston can't have him. Though. I'll see if there's another team that wants him that we can trade with though before we trade with Buffalo again So Minnie wants him yeah, we can even eat some of his contract because it's only one year. So if Minnesota wants him, we'll see what Minnesota has. But I'd like another forward, obviously. So I'll just go up right up to 50%. So we're eating $3 million of his contract. I want forwards. There's a... No, he's upset. Go to the highest worth the most Tatar they must have traded for him uh, I want somebody that's NHL ready what about no it'll be like down here Zucker Hala Can we, uh, maybe I want him though, so I'm gonna add a pick. Well, I don't. I would rather have a top six than another top nine, and I don't need. Ah, uh, no, it's 
third. A fourth first, I'll try. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so I'll just go to best lines again, so... So we can uh, continue with the trade and then just go on. Because I kind of want to finish the year, because I thought we would get... We'd be there already. Uh, Zucker... Third line. No, I'll put Zucker on the second line. And Carlson on the second line. Gergensen. Uh, Hannah, Yannick Hansen. There we go. Oh, I keep doing that. I don't even have to worry about doing that right now. Alright, now what's next? We got two more trades. One's not really got much value. Uh, yeah, Joel Ward doesn't really have much value. Montreal wants them. Yeah, let's trade with Montreal. They probably don't even have anything to trade. And this though, they wouldn't have made that. They wouldn't have made that trade yet. Yeah, see, Sergachev's still there, but Nathan. Oh no, I don't want to trade for a defenseman for him. I want a forward. Uh, Matu. Oh, he's not. There's nobody. Uh. There's nobody really with, uh, with value that's NHL ready. Well, there is with value, but there's too much value. They're all like top nines, top four defensemen. I'm not gonna make a trade with Montreal. That like, nothing, nothing there to work. Nashville. They they gotta have something though. Sissons, he's NHL already, but top nine again. Another center. Jan Croc. That might actually work. He's 83 overall. Or Jarn Jarn Croc, playmaker. It says top nine forward low, but he's already 83 overall. Arvidsson. I think I'll try for... <laughs> yeah, I got a younger... Uh... I got a younger... Uh... younger forward that's the same overall as uh, I don't know if uh, Harlow Grove's either same overall as Joel Ward just younger what the heck oh I'm in forwards so I was going to say where the hell is Paul Martin so Paul Martin actually does have decent trade value oh he is 87 overall I don't know if I should trade him well I'm going to get I'll get defense back. Younger defenseman. Let's see. Because I don't know if he'll retire or not. CC. Yeah, I could get CC and more for him. Not in real life, I don't think. That's not a very good trade uh, for them. But I don't know, like, he might really be helping us. More teams should want him, you would think. Bob, of course Boston wants him. Buffalo wants him, Boston wants him. Highest potentials. Uh, uh, Krug. <laughs> Carlo, Morrow, ah, uh, crude. Oh, he's already 25. I'll try a different team. Buffalo, I don't think. Well, actually, they have, uh, what's his name? McK 
cave, he gets good. Gets good though, he's not really. No. No, I might just keep Paul Martin. Though I could probably get a first round pick and a defenseman for him. Like, bull you or whatever. I could get him. And maybe a first round pick from Montreal. No, they're not going to give up their first round pick. So, no. Nashville. Alright, let's see this. They got they have real good defensemen. Younger defensemen too. So Ekholm, Ellis, they're both twenty six though, so they're probably not gonna grow. Maybe I'll take Ekholm. And maybe I can get a second. Probably can't get a first, but maybe a second. Third. Yeah. So there we go. We got younger. Uh, Jason Zook, I didn't like that. Now we'll go edit lines and we'll head. Uh, we'll finish up the year, hopefully. Unless if we make the playoffs still, then we'll uh, we'll see who we're facing and then we'll stop at the playoffs. Um, so first I'm going to edit the lines and I have a little bit more to talk about. So yeah, I like that, but I don't like, I don't like that. So I'll put Carlson there. Now he's listed as a depth forward, so he, so he dropped, put Gergensen there. I kind of want to keep, oh yeah, that's right, I don't want him there. Zucker, Tierney on the face-offs. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. Don Scoy. Zucker, Carlson. Wait. Maybe I put Carlson on the third line. Ah, they're both of the third liners. And, okay, so that forward line's good. Uh, Vlasic, Burns, uh, yeah. Ekholm and Braun, yeah. Dylan and Schlemko, yeah. And our goalies again. Yeah. Saros point nine zero eight. He got a couple more wins. He was all he only had four before. Now he's got six. So we'll uh we'll go on. I wanna hear uh, some of your opinions on some of these goalies too. Uh, next I'll talk about somebody who uh Who, who's going to be a starter that hasn't, that wasn't, or hasn't been a starter yet. And we're like right at the end of the year. Uh, Mike Weber. Should we claim Mike Weber? 77 overall. Ah. Uh, Scott Darling, that's who it is. Who we're going to talk about? Uh, Scott Scott Darling is uh, going to Carolina. I don't think he'll. I think he'll be a good starter, but I don't think he will be his first year. I think he's going to struggle with Carolina because he doesn't have a team like Chicago has in front of him, where he's used to good defensive players, good all-around players. He's going to have Carolina in front of him. Last year, he had a goals against average of 2.38 and a save percentage of .924. I don't think his save percentage will be anywhere near that next year. I think it will be more like it's .9 I will still be 
in the point nines, but it won't be that. Maybe point nine oh eight, like, or maybe even less than that, but close around that area. And point nine one, I think, will be like the highest his save percentage will be. Oh crap! I didn't want to do that. Best lines. That's gonna move everybody around. Maybe I should should just do best lines. Let's just see what best lines does anyway. There was no rod up there again. Ah, uh, but uh, Jan oh he went up. Yeah, I just don't I don't see why Melker Carlson would be there. And Gergensen's gone up now too, and so has Tyranny. I am gonna leave them the same way I had them. Cause I don't know if Carlson will grow any, but I would like him to. Oh, did, oh yeah, that's right. Our our one defenseman got injured, so I wasn't done talking about Scott Darling. But yeah, I really don't. I don't think that his first year in Carolina is gonna go that great. I'm not a GM though. Like the Carolina GM, obviously uh, Ron Francis, I think it is. Saw something in Scott Darling that he thought, oh, he'll he'll be good for us. I I think his first year he he is gonna struggle a little. He doesn't have the team he's used to in front of him. So uh, I don't know why I only did two weeks there. Ah, I did best lines again. Oh well. So yeah, that that's my opinion on Scott Darling. Anyway, I I don't think he's gonna have a good first year. I think he will be good, but I think we're gonna make the playoffs, guys. We are forty three, thirty and five. I think we might be in. Yeah, we're in. We made it. So we clinched a playoff position. That's sweet. Maybe the trades help too. I'll talk about one more goalie. Uh, I'm going to talk about anti uh, Niami, not Ranta. Not this time. This is the last goalie I'm going to talk about. Uh, uh, Niami's going to be a backup, obviously, in Pittsburgh. There's no question about it. Uh, Frig, Ekholm got injured. Hopefully he's back for the playoffs. Oh, we lost both games to Vancouver. Oh, good, he's back. Um, anti Niami, I think. Well, I know it's going to be a backup, and I'm like a hundred percent sure he will do better in Pittsburgh than he did in Dallas last year. Last year, that he had nothing that an NHL goalie would have. A goals against average of 3.3 is almost... Well, that is ridiculous. Like, it's... That's not a good goalie uh, goals against average. Like, I don't care how crappy your defense is as a goalie. That's not a good goals against average. And his save percentage was .892. That's... That's uh, that's AHL goalie numbers, like AHL rookie goalie numbers, getting the starts in the NHL. He didn't deserve to stay in the NHL with those numbers. But I think in Pittsburgh he's going to be a backup and he's going to do a lot better. He won't have uh, he won't have the pressure on him as a starter does he did like he did all right in san jose so all oh, we get like the normal uh the normal san jose uh thing la anyway i'm gonna go back and edit the line so i remember and uh so i never finished uh anti niami though he'll probably have a goals against average of no higher than probably 2.75 which I already said was my highest that I would 
ever want mine to be. Oh, crap. And, uh, as save percentage will be above 0.9, it might be, like, the same as I said about, uh, Scott Darling 0.908 or whatever. Or maybe 0.91. But it's definitely going to be better than it was last year. I believe that Pittsburgh's GM does know what he's doing. And he wouldn't have signed... He wouldn't have signed Ranta... Or Niami. If he didn't think that Niami would be a good backup. He obviously knows what he's doing. Pittsburgh won the Stanley Cup two years in a row now. Uh, so yeah... I don't think he'll be great, but he'll be a decent backup. He'll do definitely better than he did last year. And that's it for the goalie talk. I don't think I still don't think I have this right though. Do I want? Maybe I'll put him on the right wing. I'll move him down there. Yeah, and I'll put which one? I'll put that Jan Croc there. And I'll leave Don Scoy on the fourth line, but he's the left wing, so I'll move that. There we go. Defense, Vlasic, Burns, Braun. Yeah, oh, that's right. And obviously our goalies are right, too. Oh, he jumped up to an 88. I didn't think he ever really got better. All right, so that'll be it for this episode. And um, I'm probably, this is probably going to be the only one I do tonight. So, uh. If you like it, uh, subscribe and uh, give me your feedback on what you think some of the goalies or some of the other players, uh, how well you think they'll do with their new teams. I will do more with, uh, with other players too and talk about them later, but right now I was just doing the goalies. So uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like. And have a wonderful day. Bye.